Welcome to the Nerd Culture is Dead podcast. I'm your host and thoroughly nerd, Zach. Today's topic will be what makes good drinking games, drinking games. And to help me discuss this topic, today's guests will be Jen at Nerd Culture is Dead and Oscar at Emwell Rivera. So let's go ahead and uh, dive right into it. So Jen, your favorite drinking game, go. Wow, you gave me no time to prep. You're not supposed to have prep. It's your favorite drinking game. It should become very quick um, to you. I got it. Never oh. have I ever. I guess pretty pretty basic simple game. You get to know people. You can drink at your own leisure. You don't have to get shit faced. Yeah, if that's you don't want that's, to. That's pretty boring, Oscar. How about you? Uh, I like to play beer pong with house rules where you put different liquors in different cups, so you get fucked up even more. Oh, I see. You're an asshole. I'm one of those demons that if we're drinking, we're drinking. Okay. See, for me, it's Ring of Fire. Because that is more of a, uh, everyone gets fucked up, but it's at a pretty fun pace. (laughs) You say that. When we play Ring of Fire, the first three cards we get are waterfalls, and I'm at the end. Every single time. It's not a nice, fair game. Oh, no. If you want to get, if you want to get messed up fast, you got to do flip cup. Like, you line up a team, four on four flip cup, you got your anchors at the end, you just go. Are you playing flip cup with shots or? Oh, no. So it's. I'm sorry. You can play flip cup with shots. Yeah. So basically what it is is this. You line up the four cups on each side. You go down the line. The last person chugs most uh, chugs like two thirds of the cup of beer and then they have to take a shot as well. Oh and they have God. to flip the cup to make it land. It's basically a Jaeger bomb at the Man, end. Man, it's yeah. no wonder I'm not invited to parties. So, <laughs> well, let's go ahead and take that as a sign of discussion, right? So, one of the goals of a drinking game is to get, well, drunk. And so, a measure of some of these drinking games is how fucked up and how quickly they can get you, well, fucked up. So... Really, the measure of this has got to be the volume of alcohol you're consuming, rather that be liquor or beer. Yeah. Because I don't know about you, but for me, when it's shots, I'm normally doing fine. But when I have to chug like two or three beers, I'm I'm done after that, man. I can do I. The thing, I don't like wasting liquor, and sometimes when I chug, you can feel it like sliding off the side of your beard, and it's like ah, I just wasted some liquor. But, like, I'll do, like, one chug of a beer, but I'm not wasting liquor for the rest of the night because that's exactly what I'm drinking. Like, I know my limits, and then I'm good. And so you don't like games that necessarily force you to take in a bunch of alcohol at once because it kind of yeah, I wanna wastes go out, the drink. Yeah, it wastes the drink, and you kind of want to go at your own pace. But it all depends on, like, the party and the atmosphere and what's the liquor and see, like, amount. that's part of why I like the concept of, like, Never Have I Ever or, like, some basic bitch game because it's not forcing you and, and to chug alcohol. Versus, it's, like, playing battle shots. Yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> but see, see, the Drinking. only downside to me is I'm, like, 20 pounds, so... Yeah, you're tiny. Yeah, so I'm a super lightweight, so, like, I can do three or four shots. But then I'm out. <laughs> no, no, no. Four shots is your blackout stage, hon. No. Three is my blackout stage. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Interesting question. What's your limit, Zach? See, that's the problem is it's changed so much since I got back from college. Because, <laughs> like, if you had asked me back in 2019, it'd probably be around 15 shots. Well, that's not that bad. No, you would not. The, bro, I'd be dead. Dude, I can do... Now I'm probably around nine. I can do 16 beers, 10 shots, and I'm still okay. I meant like four or five shots absolute max. It also highly depends for me because for whatever reason, I don't like metabolizing beer as quickly as I can do just hard alcohol. Yeah. So when I have four or five beers, I'm pretty well into it at that point. Yeah. You're getting like a nice buzz and you're like feeling it out. I'm getting drunk at that point. (laughs) But like for whatever reason with shots, I can just keep going and going and it doesn't hit me till way later. Yeah, you have those, like, surreal moments where you just took, like, your 10th shot. You're sitting on the couch, and you're like... Yeah, and it's pure clarity. Yeah, and you just go into the frickin' Matrix. (laughs) But somehow you're not drunk yet. Yeah, you're just like, I'm still alive, but I don't know how I'm functioning. (laughs) Yeah, that's what gets me, man. But that kind of determines the game, because games like beer pong are naturally inclined to have you taken a large volume of alcohol, but not necessarily determined... That it's going to be, like, when I used to play beer pong, we would always just substitute the water in the cups for, well, water, and we would just do shots to the side. 
versus some people play with just straight beer in the cups. And I hate that because it's disgusting when a fucking ping pong ball hits the ground and gets covered in dirt and you that's just blow why it you, off. That's why you have a water cup on the but, side, all right? You've got to class it up a little bit. No, I get that, but it's... You're wasting you're, alcohol at that point. Well, not even... It's not even about the wasting of beer, but... You're not wasting it's it because you're drinking it's it. It's still gross because you have room temperature water that is full of bacteria that I mean, you now put the dirt bacteria into. You're, you're not wrong. It's unsanitary. Just have the sh- drinks to the side. Hear me out. Most of the time beer pong is being played, it's at like a college party. Yeah, you're right, where they're real. spreading even more diseases. Well, guy. not even that. <laughs> college kids don't fucking care. Yeah, they don't give three shits. But but to be honest, I like if I'm playing beer pong, I like the shots idea on the side or the water in the cups, and then you have a drink in your hand. It just makes the game go a little bit easier and quicker to set up and just keep going through the rounds. Yeah, instead of having to refill the cups because you drank beer. So other games that kind of force you to go ahead and take up various amounts of alcohol, like I've we recently got a game for a Christmas present a while ago where it's like catapult like shots with kind of like the beer pong idea where you got 10 uh, shot glasses lined up on a board and you have a little catapult with a little ball tied to a string. You have to launch the ball, tether it into the string, into the shot glass, and you make that player take a shot. Absolutely ridiculous game. But then you have things like ring of fire that you're using your own drink. So you can kind of control the pace at which you're getting drunk just based off how much alcohol you're consuming there because you can pour a heavier drink or you can pour yourself a lighter drink and no one's going to care, really. At that point, it's just all going to get mixed up together. Well, and it's more of a social game anyway where it's determined by chance what you're doing. Yeah. And so it, no, nobody cares what you're drinking. You're just sitting there to have fun with the people or people who tie drinks to certain games. Like they'll play a movie and... Every anytime a actor says an iconic line, you have to drink. Or oh, those are fun. Mm-hmm. Anytime you see a dinosaur in Jurassic Park, you have to drink. Dude, I will tell you a little. Anytime f- Oscar says, "Dude, you have to drink." <laughs> okay, so I did something very stupid. Our mutual friend Gabe, me and him for Cinco de Mayo one year, which was May the f- uh, May the Fourth be with you. Mm-hmm. Our smart ideas were my idea. He's like, I want to get drunk today. I was like, Okay, we'll get drunk. So we go to the liquor store, we buy liquor, and we start driving. And he's like, yo, you want to do a Star Wars drinking game for May the 4th be with you? And I was like, okay, tomorrow's Cinco de Mayo. We should be fine. We played the game of every time someone ignites or turns off a lightsaber, you take a shot. And Geonosis has got to kill you, man. A a shot? A shot. And we watched Clone Wars first. Oh, my God. So you can only imagine they're in the arena and these bunch of giant lightsabers just start igniting. We're like, oh, shit. I'd be dead five minutes into the movie. You would be dead at the moment you see General Grievous and he says, hello there. And four lightsabers turn Uh on. Four shots. (laughs) Obi-Wan Kenobi. (laughs) Yeah. Get the bottle. (laughs) Those are fun drinking games. Now, there's one like that for the thing where any time a flamethrower is ignited, you have to take a shot. Oh, my God. I I have a drinking game I want to talk about. So, Zach and I made a drinking game. We got bored of the typical drinking games, and we said, fuck it, we can make one. So, um, total patent pending for sure, right? Um, <laughs> we went and... Basically, we just made them on on fucking index, index cards. cards. Yeah. Um, but we called it off the table, and so you started with a card, like a center point in the middle it was a spinner. So you would spin the spinner, and then whatever color it lands, like so, everyone's assigned a color. Whatever color it lands on is the person who has to do the thing. So we had two sets of cards. We had like shot cards, which were smaller cards. And then we had, like, sip cards, like you took a sip of your drink kind of thing, which were bigger cards. And the whole point was, if it landed on you, you had to draw a card. You could pick which one you wanted to draw, but you had to then play the card from the spinner going towards you. And the cards had to connect, and the first one to fall off the table was out and had to drink, like, the bitch cup in the middle kind of thing. (laughs) That sounds awesome. So like you it's could do you could do amazing. the smaller cards and keep yourself going, but you're doing shots. 
Well, not only that, they had stacking negative effects. So some of them were rules cards, kind of like enchantments and magic. Oh, okay. Where they would say, anytime the player to your left drinks, you also drink. Oh, my or gosh. Or anytime you drink, you choose someone else to drink. Because they would have either positive or negative effects, mm-hmm. which made the game fun, is you weren't constantly getting screwed. Yeah. You would sometimes get cards that say, whenever a card asks you to drink, and it would put it in quotations, you don't have to drink. So, if yeah, somebody like chooses you freeze, to drink, you yeah. don't have to. But if you have to take a shot, you do still. Oh my god. That so, sounds amazing. It's it's a lot of fun, but... I, I have a story about it. So, we, we played it one time, and our friend Bruce ended up being the... He had to be the barmaid. That was one of his cards, was he had to be the barmaid for the rest of the night. And so, I was doing, I think, shots of vodka or, or rum. One of the two. And he went, you know what? Fuck you, Jen. And my next shot was whiskey. I've never puked so hard in my life. <laughs> like, I was doing fine. It was like three in the afternoon. And oh, my, my friend drinking. Jared comes over and he comes over. And well, this we're was just, for your birthday, right? Yeah, it was from, It was my birthday or Halloween something. We had some party. And Jared gets there. It's like three in the afternoon and I'm already puking. You know what it was? It was Halloween. That's what it was. Because I remember being dressed as Luigi and you were Mario. Oh, oh already puking at three in the afternoon from the fucking game oh, that sounds so fun oh. well we'll have to play that game on stream or something oh dear god oh, that would be amazing i'm down because it can fit up to eight players it's really designed for four for it to that's fine be we, good we just need another one then either that or dude what we could do is um change the shape of the center spinner to be like a hexagon that we can fit six oh i'm saying it's, make it's best played on a round table though yeah a round table oh, makes yeah. it simple enough yeah of course. But like I said, super, super beta. Like, we, we have a shitty cardboard spinner and index cards. <laughs> oh. Does icing count as a drinking game or no? That's just a I, prank. No, that's just I, a prank, yeah. Hold oh, okay. on. That, that's not frosting on a cake? No, icing is when you take a Smirnoff ice, hide it somewhere where somebody finds it. Once they find it, they have to get on one knee and chug the Smirnoff ice. What the fuck? I think you found a new game to play, Zach. <laughs> Jen likes Smirnoff's ice, so this could be interesting. I do like Smirnoff. <laughs> o- o- opens up to a fucking drawer to grab like some new- a new roll of toilet paper. Finds a Smirnoff ice, goes fuck. Hold on, hold on. I want to clarify. You want to keep that underneath the bathroom sink and just hope I find that random. I, I did at a not party? say it would taste good or it would be cold. I yeah, was like, it's that's gonna be thing. like that's the thing. You never know. Old you never know if it's cold enough. Or not. Like, <laughs> well, you got to think strategically. You got to put it there. <laughs> The day you think that they know they're going to have to go grab a new roll, or if, like, you know that they're going to have to go to do something in the fridge, you put one right as they open the door, so it's the first thing they see, and just take a knee I and I feel try. like a fridge is cheating, though. Well, that's if you want to be generous and keep it cold. You could so, be evil and just leave it warm. There was a game that I played on my birthday a few years ago, where upon entering the house, I was at the door, and I taped a word to your back. And the whole idea was, you don't know what the word is, but everyone else around you does. Whenever you say the designated word, within 15 seconds of saying it, somebody would say what your, whatever your name is, and then shot. And so you would then have to take a shot. You could guess the name of your, or you could guess your word and take it off at any point. But if you got it wrong, you had to take a drink. Oh my god. And so... My friend Cody happened to get the word shot put on his back. (laughs) The problem is, is my friends are evil. And so what they decided to do was entirely lie to him when he said that his word was shot. And they did tell him his word was shot. And so Cody, I think this is the only time that (laughs) I've ever seen this man actually intoxicated. But... He he had been 15 shots in until he pulled off his word on his own. And he was just so livid. He was screaming and yelling. And 15 minutes later, he passed out because he was, well, drunk right. beyond all recognition. But that was a fun game when oh my God. your friends aren't evil. Yeah. But you yeah. gotta have a good group, though. Yeah, like, you gotta not have asshole friends. Yeah, like, the, the, the asshole friends are gone, so it's not that big of an issue. Well, that's what I'm saying. There's a difference between having a good game and it being fun and having a good game and some asshole ruining it. Yeah, by being toxic. Yeah. Like, they'll, they'll be, like, a rules judge throughout the whole game. They're like, mm-hmm. you're not allowed to do that. 
that's a shot because you messed up. Yeah, but I don't want to have to moderate my own games like that. No, just Why have not? good friends. Yeah, just have friends who understand the rules. Now, if someone fucks up, they fuck up and just move on from it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But that was a fun, that was a fun drinking game. That got the party going really fast. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so when do you think is the right time to do a drinking game at a party? Do you do it right off the bat or do you like midway? I, I always try, if I'm hosting a party, I try and do it off the bat because it gets everyone in a good mood. It, okay. it lightens the atmosphere immediately. And so it doesn't matter what you do for the rest of the night because everybody's already having a good time. Yeah, mm-hmm. and he gets a lot of new friends to meet old friends and you mix and interact. And then like you just you find somebody to talk to or connect with at a party. Yeah, it makes it everything move. work really easy. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Just, just being a coy. <laughs> oh, have you guys ever played... Um, They do it on TV shows all the time. Have you ever played the drinking game where someone has to duct tape a drink to your hand and you have to finish it? And you can't use your hands for the rest of the day? No, I have never heard of this shit. What? So, You've never played that game? So I don't get invited to parties no, because it's- I'm not cool. <laughs> it's not a party game it's more of like you're bored and it's a friday and you're not working so you're gonna do an at-home drinking game or there's another version of that game called um wizard staff wizard staff Ooh, you want we got to play wizard staff one day so the the name of the game is wizard staff what you do is you drink whatever you preferably all the drinks are in cans and whoever has the biggest wizard staff at the end of the night has to make a drink that everybody else has to drink, no matter what it is. And so basically what you're doing is you're just stacking these cans on top of each other to form your tallest wizard staff. Yeah, and the winner gets to choose to choose the poison for the losers. And if there's a tie, you got to Rochambeau to see who wins. Well, hear oh, me course. out. To make that an improvement, instead of rock, paper, scissors to figure it out, if there's a tie, you have five minutes to tape and manufacture your stack into a spear and you have to battle dude uh, that'd be so sick that's a lot of duct tape that's a lot of okay hey, duct sorry tape? you get okay count you can do like all right 30 seconds go <laughs> I, I, would Prepare just, for I, battle? I, I, I would just start pelting the other guy with my cans <laughs> yeah. suck it <laughs> no, nobody said i couldn't have a bunch of tiny staffs no no that's not wrong too all right, question. What was the first drinking game you've ever been a part of? The first drinking game I've ever been a part of? Yeah, like what's the first one you were introduced to like right off the bat? All right, so I didn't start my drinking escapades until I was in college. Okay. Because I was a goody two-shoes in high school. <laughs> Once I got to college, everything kind of went off the rails. <laughs> and this is going to sound fucking stupid, but um, Dungeons and Shots. Oh, that sounds fun. Just so... This is actually how the Salty Barrel one-shot came Mm -hmm. to be, was we were playing Dungeons and Dragons, and periodically we would just do shots, and I was like, hold on, what if we tied it to our character's actions? So, like, I was playing a monk at the time, and I was like, okay, anytime I use a key point ability, we take a shot. Oh my god. Anytime the wizard casts a spell above a cantrip, take a shot. Shot. Anytime the paladin uses his divine smite, take a shot. Oh my god. Anytime the barbarian rages, shot. It, it, exactly, it was that. And so it ended up being a thing that persisted the entire way through college and ended up becoming something I would end up writing and making into a full-fledged one-shot where we, we ran it on Twitch before. Yeah, that seems like a sick-ass party game. It, it's fun, it's chaotic, but uh I, I've done it so many times, I, I don't want to do it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't make me go play d d <laughs> No, I just want to let it die, man. The, 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 the one shot has had its, like, four years of glory. It, it, it can rest. <laughs> it can rest. <laughs> what about you, Jen? What was the question? First, first ever drinking, drinking game. game. Oh, the first drinking game I did, um, I was at... I, was, I hosted a party. Yeah. And I was... I was of drinking age, but I wasn't really big into drinking. But I had a couple other people who wanted to play a drinking game. So they decided they were going to play Ring of Fire. So I kind of watched them play Ring of Fire. But then I later, I think I joined in. So I guess Ring of Fire. I do have a question, though. What was the first time you ever drank? And is there a funny story to it? (sighs) Yes. 
I have a good one. Go for it. Okay, so I was in Puerto Rico. It was the drinking age is different over there. So I, I realistically started drinking when I was sixteen when I go to Puerto Rico for like New Year's and stuff. One year, me and my cousin, who's like a year younger than me, he ha- he speaks Spanish badly, and no, he speaks English badly, and I speak Spanish badly. Like we 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 mess with each other all the time. We got so drunk one year. <laughs> My uh, my cousin, his sister was driving us with her husband in the car. We kept arguing back and forth. He kept trying to yell at me in English while I tried to yell at him in Spanish. It was the funniest shit for like a good 30 minutes. It was like two bumbling drunks in the back of the car arguing at each other in different languages. And we would just get more pissed off with each other <laughs> the more we yelled at each other, just yelling phrases back and other. He's like, but my English is perfect, man. And I'm like, oh my God, you idiot. <laughs> I'm like, please stop speaking. Oh my god, that was that was a memorable night for drinking, for sure. Yeah. My my first time drinking was very embarrassing because I I had never drank an alcohol at this point in my freshman year of college. I I made some good friends over there, and one of them had gotten a handle of rum at one point, and so we we were just sitting in the room doing shots and. I didn't know I couldn't handle my liquor because I, I was fresh out of cross country and track for four years. Oh, so you were a clean boy. Yeah, I, I was clean. I was drinking only water for like two years. I had a body weight of around 11%. <laughs> Damn. And so I I took two shots and I was completely gone. <laughs> Beyond recognition drunk. <laughs> Oh my god! And I and I am a sad drunk, so I was just <laughs> crying <laughs> over nothing. Was <laughs> at the time I had nothing to be sad about. My yeah. life was fine. Yeah, you were just like, why am I here? <laughs> Essentially, yeah. I got I got a question and a story. So I'm gonna do my story first, and then I'm gonna do my question. So story. Um, my friend Alex, he, uh, so when he turned 21, he was just kind of like over at his friend's house for a party they were doing and he, he never really drank before. So what he does is, you know, he gets a whole red solo cup, red solo cup, fills the whole thing with vodka. Dumbass. And he's just, (laughs) he's taking sips from it. Like, you know, you would any other drink. And at one point his friend goes, Man, what are you drinking? And he like takes a sip of it and goes, Okay, okay. Um, and then the other dude's like, What is it? And he goes, Oh, it's just water. And he goes, oh, Okay. And another friend does it, Yeah, it's just water. Another friend does it, Oh my god, that's vodka. It takes the whole thing away from him. <laughs> he's like, absolutely not. So that guy has two devils on his shoulder. <laughs> he's like, He's fine, he's fine, it's just water. Um it's, it's clear. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's water, like, all right. It's, it's fine. Um, and then I guess my story. So have we? Well, that was your story. Was oh, it not? question. <laughs> yeah, what was the? I guess are, I'm are you already drinking? drunk, guys. We're not drunk. I swear. <laughs> um, mm. my question. Um, so we've already established, Zach. You are a very sad drunk. Yeah. I am a very horny drunk. Oscar, what about you? So you ever heard that? You ever heard how people explain like there's different types of drunk? I'm the I love you guy drunk. See, that's my early level of drunk. So, like, I, I go like, from that straight into depression. Like, if I if I am drunk, I will literally go up to Zach, and be like, "Hey, man, I fucking love you, dude." <laughs> just for like a good hour and a half, just stick mm-hmm. on Zach, and be like, "Dude, you're so awesome. I'm so glad we're friends, dude. I just love yeah. you so much, bro. I just love you so much." Zach gets like that, and he gets real happy and giddy, and then it's like there's a fine line. So it's like. One more sip and it's straight depression. <laughs> yeah, like I go from the highest highs to the lowest lows immediately. And there's no saving me after because I'll just, just be at that level for the rest of the night. Just like, you're gone. You're gone, dude. Yeah, it's like, you go to bed, Zach. You're done for the night. <laughs> but, but you're not done. You're like in the shower crying and puking. And I'm like, all right, this is my life now. <laughs> oh, my God. No. Yeah, I've been trying to find that line. and It's a mystery we got it it's a mystery at this point i just kind of given up on being drunk (laughs) at this point we just got to do like a testing phase where we just all just plan on staying here for one night and you're right we do a controlled experiment controlled experiment all right zach this is seven or this is like 50 milliliters of flicker drink it and see where you're at (laughs) hey and you never want to drink alone i'll drink it with you (laughs) 
all horny all the time. <laughs> no. <laughs> you know, I could just imagine that scene. She comes in just horny because she's drunk and you're just like, don't touch me, I'm fat. <laughs> My skin looks weird. I'm ugly. I don't deserve this. (laughs) Why do you love me, Jen? (laughs) I'm a fat slob. (laughs) Oh, God. That would be the best night ever. Oh, please. I'm glad Oscar's (laughs) having fun with it. I would love to see that. Just be like. He just wants to watch you cry in misery. I want to see you suffer. <laughs> That's not too surprising. <laughs> hey, if you haven't seen some of your best friends drunk, have you actually become best friends? <laughs> you haven't made your best friends drunk, let's be real. Well, I mean, we'll have an opportunity on Saturday. Yeah, that's going to be a fun time. I don't I don't have to go to work in, until like three the next day, so it's going to be a fun night for me. <laughs> so let's go ahead and talk real quick about the benefits of shots. Okay, hear me out. Another story time. Not super long story, but story time. So when I turned 21, I went to a dinner show for my birthday. That's what I wanted to do. I got a big group. I told myself when I turned 21, I was like, I'm not I'm not doing shots. It's not happening. So I got a mixed drink. I didn't like it. So I just passed it down the table. Somebody took it. I had enough people there. Someone took it. It was fine. That's called a good friend. Yeah. Um... Did not like my mixed drink. Said, fuck it. My friend Josh bought me my first ever shot. Uh, It was a lemon drop. It was terrible. I hated it. Never doing that again. Hmm. Lemon drops are just overrated. Yeah, they are. Um, The cocktail's good, though. The the dinner show had like a a segment like halfway through where they paused, basically. And they were like, all right, who wants blue balls? And it was a shot that they called blue balls. And so like everybody... For the most part, a good chunk of everyone was like, yeah, I'll take some blue balls. So, you know, we all did a shot of blue balls. Um, So my birthday where I said I was not doing shots, I I did nothing but shots. (laughs) Took a sip of the mixed drink and went, nope. Um, So shots for me, because I'm real picky with alcohol, I either have to have a ridiculously fruity drink where I don't taste the alcohol and it's sip, sip, sip. Oh, shit, I'm drunk. Or one and done. So it's a quick five second torture myself with a shot and then I'm fucked. Shotgun to the face. (laughs) (laughs) It's just so quick and effective, I mean. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it all depends on how you pick your poison. Like for me, if I'm doing shots, it's got to be tequila. I can do tequila all day. Tequila, gin, vodka, rum. Those are the four. If you tell me to do a whiskey shot, I I like want to hit you because... Oh. Why, why would you shoot whiskey? Have That's you ever not had, you should sip. Have you ever had the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse? No, Hold but on. Jen was talking about a Four Horsemen shot. I think she has. No, no I'm not that stupid. <laughs> did you do it as one shot? No, they were separate shots, but you did yeah. them back to back to back. Yeah, yeah. So, my friend, Matt, uh, when he turned 21, because typically the Four Horsemen shot is a shot, but it's like a quarter ounce or an ounce or whatever of Yeah, of it's layered. Each four different ones and it's a layered shot he did it as four separate shots on top of all the beer and what else he had already he did it as four separate shots and he was fucked <laughs> i imagine that's just called a good time man i should fuck just about anybody yeah i mean he, he's a big dude so like he it takes something to get him drunk but he, he can do it <laughs> you know what's one drinking game i've never played what? That I want to play. It's the one where you have to bounce the quarter into the opponent's cup. Oh, I'm so good at quarters. Bro, I've never played quarters and I'm so down. I've seen so many movies like where they play the game and I've never played it once. I have only lost quarters once in my life. I repeat, I don't get invited to things, so I've never played like anything. So I don't know what this is. Well, quarter. So basically, it's uh, you have a drink and there's you each in front of you. You have a little shot glass mm-hmm. and you have to bounce the other you have to bounce your quarter in their shot glass, so either take a shot or they pound their drink. Mm-hmm. We played with shots because we were idiots. Yeah. Yeah, that's called you just want to get fucked up quick. Yeah. I, I got very good at bouncing quarters. Oh, I We used to play it off of people at one point, too. That was fun. I, I have another shot story. I 
in my early clubbing years before COVID ruined my life. Um, no, I, I was just starting to get into going clubbing. And so like I used to hit, um, city walk over in universal and I used to go in there and we decided for whatever reason that I thought mixing my alcohol would be fun. So I did, I had four shots this night. I did a shot of Bacardi. Then I did two shots of Crown Royal, the apple one. And then when I got action, and this was all pre-game, mind you. Pre-game this. Jesus. Went to a club. Was already three shots in when I made this poor decision. We were looking at the bar, and, like, the bartender's, like, low-key hitting on me. So I'm just kind of like, yeah, whatever. Looking at the bar, I see something called On Death's Door. That's what it is. And I went, give me a shot of that. That was that was a terrible idea. Gin hasn't drank any gin since. Yes, yeah, no, that's that's a gin. It was called on death's door, and I said absolutely not, never again. So, oh, this is a kind of the beauty of drunk people is they'll make decisions based off of the absolute worst context ever. Yeah. So a drunk gen mm-hmm. will see something that says on death's door and go, you know what? That's, I, that's I'm a for ninety me. pound ginger. <laughs> I can handle that. I'll take a shot. So. When I, I came back to the club a couple days later, and the bartender recognized me, he goes, another shot of on death's door? I was like, hell no! Uh, she's like, nah, fam, I'm straight. <laughs> <laughs> nah, dude. No, if you really want something sweet, uh, I had this one year for New Year's when we were playing drinking games. You take Crown Apple Royal, and you mix it with Welcher's Grape Apple Juice, and you don't taste a damn thing. Like, you don't even feel the liquor hit you until it's too You said late. apple juice, right? Yeah. Welch's See, grape well, apple juice with Crown Royal apple. When, when I heard of Welch's, I automatically think of the grape juice. And I was about to be <laughs> really appalled. No, dude, you don't. A grape <laughs> with whiskey. No. And you know, it probably tastes good. It's like the stupid grape meatballs or grape jelly meatballs. Oh, I'm sure it tastes good. so good. Yeah. Okay. Side question. What's your favorite food to eat while you're drunk? Like, what will you eat and be like, this is made by the gods? Dessert. Any and all dessert. Not gonna lie, I think the thing that gets me the most is um, mac and cheese. Oh, like a good mac and cheese? Yeah, like a good buffalo mac and cheese oh, from like a restaurant. Nah, dude, I go pizza all the way. I could eat a whole pie so, by myself. The last few years I've gone to um, St. Petersburg once a year or so, and they have a restaurant over there called Ford's Garage. There's one and I drive now too, but they have... The best buffalo mac and cheese I've ever had in my life. Absolutely delicious. I I, I almost want to go to Ford's Garage exclusively to get mac and cheese you, now. You say almost. We do. The more, problem is... More than we should. <laughs> they're, they're far away, though, is the problem. Yeah. No, nah, dude. I'll be happy with just a Zinger mac and cheese from Ale House. Enough. Oh, no. Zinger Mountain Melt. Mm. Mm. Ale House is pretty underrated yeah but they have good liquor too though i wish they would have more like variety but it's still pretty good no, i mean it's your typical like applebee's kind of setup yeah oh it's have you ever how many family restaurants have full function bars <laughs> yeah if you got kids you got to have alcohol to function yeah that's fair i guess it's the way to distract you from the kids <laughs> my uh i used to work at walmart and my old boss was he wasn't a drunk but like he definitely drank every single day And I told him, I was like, man, I don't get it. And then I got promoted and I went, you know what? I understand. I get it now. (laughs) Funny, you're a store manager now and you don't drink as much. Smaller store. Walmart. Walmart. Walmart, Walmart's (laughs) chaos. Walmart Walmart makes you drink. Anything makes you drink after a hard day of nonsense. I was going to say something. I forgot what it was about. Yeah, same. I had something earlier, and then I was like, oh, shiny. Your, your story caught me off guard. I was going <laughs> to think of something. What the heck was it? Oh, there's this other card game that I've heard of that I've never seen anybody actually play. It's called Suck and Blow. <laughs> oh, I, I know, guys, I know this one. <laughs> oh, my God. Look, she's evolving. <laughs> It's because it had the word suck and blow in it. Yeah, I, I'm familiar with what I am designed to do, yes. <laughs> oh, God. You're welcome. Go ahead, honey. Um, 
I'm going to be honest, I don't know the drinking part of it, but I know the concept of how the game is played. So hear me out. I'm going to explain how to suck and blow. So what you do is there is a playing card. So, you know, standard playing card. And what you do is you're basically making out with people without making out with people. So you have to suck the playing card to keep it on your lips. You then... Pass it to the next player using their lips. So you blow it like they would suck it from you and you, you blow, blow it, it to them. And you just kind of go down and the whoever line. whoever drops it has to take a shot or yes. something. Yes. Uh-huh. Yeah. And that's that's the game. All right. I, I think we could go ahead and skip that and just go straight to making out and go, don't, all right, cool. Who, don't who's be ridiculous. the worst kisser? All right. <laughs> drink so you're a better kisser. <laughs> <laughs> so... Just to go ahead and wrap this up, I think we should go ahead and take our experience as youth and apply that and try and give people some tips. I thought you were going to say we all have to take a shot. No, not right now. I have to drive home. No. <laughs> I was like, I am not prepared. So, Oscar, if you could give yourself any bit of advice five years ago, what, what, what would you tell yourself about drinking? <sighs> Drink water before the night before the night of that you're drunk before you go to sleep. Drink water. If you have a little bit of a hangover, this is like a Puerto Rican remedy. You crack open a cold beer the next morning and you drink it. Cures the hangover. Yeah, because if you're still drunk, you can't. It be works. Hungover. It works. It works for me. <laughs> and just have food in your stomach too at night. That's like the main thing for me. I'm fucking eat a sandwich yeah eat a sandwich eat something that's gonna absorb it for the next day especially if you have to work the next day you know how many times i had to go to lowe's hungover yeah you know it was the best thing for my hangovers at lowe's what when i worked out in the garden center and i'd come to work hungover and i'd be working a morning shift i would stop at the steak and shake on the way and just get a fucking um garlic double cheeseburger Oh my god! That that was my hangover cure. No, steak and nothing, shake. Nothing like a greasy burger to sober up them drunken stomachs. Mm-hmm. Mm. What about you, Jen? Anything you tell your former self? <laughs> don't drink, dear, <laughs> dear young naive Jen. Don't do a shot of on death door. Worst decision you've ever made. How how about this? Don't do a shot of something that literally has the word death in it. Yeah, I repeat. Three shots in when I made poor decision. Oh, I see. That was the original four shot gen. Yeah. Yeah, this, it was, it was three impro- shots, make poor decision, fucked. I, I wish I could have seen that. That would have been funny. Oh, it was fun. I was fun. Sounds like a good time. I was um, hungover. If I could tell myself anything in the past, um, just honestly, just buy cheap booze especially for shots like if you're ha- having a party you, there's no need to buy middle shelf booze like yeah. don't buy an 80 dollar bottle of whiskey yeah, go to cheap, make bro. cocktails go cheap just buy some jim beam and have some fun yeah jim beam goes mainly with almost everything like there's no reason to buy expensive booze if you're having a party just yeah. get whatever you want make a big mix it's fun yeah and don't mix and don't drink the jungle juice kids don't drink the jungle juice <clears throat> No, definitely drink the jungle juice. We're not doing... No. <laughs> put put okay, on get... Death's Door in the jungle juice, then get fucked. Oh, no. The Death Store is the jungle juice. Oh, okay. Have you ever had proper jungle juice? No, because I'm not stupid. Zach, we're getting your jungle juice next time we drink. Yeah. Dude, Uh-oh. tomorrow. We can make jungle juice. I'm so down. Bro. Oh, no. Bro. Put gummy oh, worms no. in it. Oh, oh no, 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 no. <laughs> Oh, no. (laughs) Oh, no. (laughs) Well, guys, uh, that was our session on drinking games. Um, Seriously, comment some drinking games. That way we can try them and review them. I I think we could make a uh, YouTube series out of that. That'd be fun. Oh, dear God. Dude, that'd be like the best day ever. But uh, thank you for the listen, guys. Uh, Stay safe. Drink responsibly. Please don't do anything we did or do anything we would do. We're pretty stupid. Yeah. Jen, where can you find us at? Um, So you can find both Zach and myself on YouTube, Instagram, and Twitch. Spotify as well. And Spotify. Wow. Um, Yeah, I know. Big fancy. Um, At Nerd Culture is Dead. Oscar, where where can I find your sexy lips? Oof, Zach, that's hot. (laughs) Uh, You can find me at Emmanuel Rivera. Just send me some drinking games. Send me some recipes. We'll try them out. We'll probably have another session. We should do a drunk 
podcast session. That sounds like a terrible idea. There's a lot of equipment to be spilled on. <laughs> no, we we don't drink while we're doing it. We get drunk and then we do the podcast. So we're like, all right, Jen, four shots, podcast. <laughs> <laughs> no, three shots, Jen, and then podcast. <laughs> yeah, we can't have four shot Jen on podcast. That that That's, that's too explicit. <laughs> <laughs> Probably, yeah. <laughs> Just letting you know, uh, guys, a picture of that session. Hey, Jen, can you get off of Zach's lap? It's kind of making me uncomfortable over here, man. Nope. (laughs) Sorry, Oscar. You're just going to have to put up with it. All right, guys. Drink safe. Be safe. Have fun. Bye. Bye Bye-bye.